Good evening, my name is Brian Gromkowski. I'm one of the assistant directors here in the Graduate Admissions Office at William Patterson University. I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us for our webinar today. I know it's certainly a busy time of year with the holidays and we do appreciate uh, you taking the time to join us. It's my hope that we can cover a lot of ground for you in a relatively short amount of time and get you the information that you need about registering for classes for the upcoming spring 2018 semester. Um, first and foremost, congratulations on your acceptance. I assume if you're here, uh, you either have not registered for courses online before or at William Patterson, or it's been some time since you've done so. So certainly I hope that we can uh, give you a quick refresher or uh, walk you through the process step by step. Um, so hopefully whether you uh, choose to register for classes this evening, this weekend, when you have some free time, um, you'll know exactly what it is to look for and be able to uh, solve any of the issues that might pop up if you try and register and encounter any issues. So Without further ado, I will jump right into our presentation. Here you have an aerial view of our campus. Uh, I do keep in mind that sometimes some of our students are coming from out of state. Uh, sometimes students are coming from further down in the state or uh, from another country entirely and may not have had the opportunity yet to visit our campus. So this is just an aerial view, so you get a chance to see it from above. Um, you've got the pond that's towards the front of campus, our Pompton Road uh, entrance there, and you'll see a number of large parking lots that are right here. Um, this is one of the areas where our students can park and then towards the back of campus here closer to our student center um, where you can see some of the solar panels here is another one of the primary parking lots where many of our students who will be on our main campus uh, will be parking for their courses. We also have our Valley Road campus which is a little bit further down uh, Hamburg Turnpike uh, and that's for students that will be pursuing uh, programs within our College of Education as well as our College of Business for our MBA program too. Um, and obviously it'll take some time to get acclimated and uh, certainly Morrison Hall which is located towards the front of campus here. You're always welcome to stop by. Many of the administrative offices you might take interest in are located there, and I'll talk about that a little bit as well. So this is the web registration timeline as it was established by the registrar's office. The primary reason I have this here for you to see uh, is I know some of you may have been accepted for your programs quite recently and got notification of your acceptance quite soon. Um, for you, I want to make sure you know that courses did open and become available for registration uh, as early as November 6th for uh, those students that are in our matriculated programs and are continuing. Um, and then you'll see it goes down the line for those in our certificate programs, postmasters, grad non-degree, and then it became available to all of our students, both new and continuing on November 18th. The reason I mention this, because as you might imagine, some of our courses do fill up. Uh, because of that, uh, I would recommend if you haven't already registered for your courses, you consider doing so as soon as you have the free time on your hand needed to walk through the process. I know sometimes it's easy to just say, I'll do it this weekend or next weekend or wait until after the holidays have passed. But as you can see there, classes begin for the spring semester on January 17th. Uh, it is in your best interest to ensure you register for courses as soon as you are able to do so and then that's one less thing to worry about as you get closer to the start of classes in mid-January. Here is a view of uh, the area on our website that has is each of our uh, programs as well as their requirements from uh, an admissions standpoint. But one of the important pieces of information that's there for each of our programs is the contact information for our program directors or chairperson for the department. And the reason that's important is if you do run into any issues when you try and register for a course and it asks for course, course authorizations um, because you haven't fulfilled a certain requirement, or because there may be uh, something in your a student record that's preventing you from registering. One of the first and most helpful places that you can go is uh, the program director. You can shoot them an email, you can give them a call, um, discuss the issue that you're experiencing when you're trying to register for courses, and they are oftentimes the one that would offer the permissions necessary for you to be able to register for that class. Um, so it is good to familiarize yourself with that in individual if you haven't been in communication with them yet. Um, good to reach out under those circumstances and then that's also information that would have been provided 
to you if you are a matriculated student when you received your acceptance letter in the mail or when you received uh, an email of acceptance there would have been information there about your program director as well um, so just another place where you can access that information and keep it handy should you need to reach out to them for any reason over the next couple of weeks it is also important to note uh, and this time is uh, unique compared to other terms um, but we do have many of our offices closing down during the week uh, between Christmas and New Year's uh, so do keep that in mind if you are reaching out there's a good chance faculty members will not be on campus during that time as well as the grad admissions office and some of our other departments here so again now is a great time to take care of some of these issues um, or after uh, the holidays so certainly uh, would recommend now rather than later if you get the opportunity to do so WPUN uh, J email account. Um, after you are accepted to the university, you are uh, given a WPUN J email account. Uh, all of our accepted students have one. And as you might imagine, some check them more frequently than others. Uh, what I am stressing to you now is it is good to get in the habit of logging in and checking your email regularly, especially as you get closer to the start of uh, a semester. Uh, if it is uh, of interest to you, you can work with our IT department to get your phone set up, uh, your smartphone, so that emails push directly to your phone. You can always forward those emails to uh, a personal email account if that's your preference. Whatever will ensure that you are getting important notifications, uh, I would advise you uh, to take those steps. The reason I say that is because all of the official correspondence that is coming out from uh, our university for billing purposes, registration purposes, um, they are going to be sent to your student uh, at, at WPUNJ email account. So again, there, and we'll go over some of the reasons you'll want to check this, but certainly for billing purposes and otherwise, you want to make sure you're at least checking it once a week, uh, ideally more frequently than that, so you're not missing out on something important um, that could impact your studies here. So again, uh, you would go to WP Connect. That's the online student portal that we have here. Uh, it's right through our main website there, WPUNJ.edu. You click the login button. Your username is going to appear as it does in uni university email address. And again, this is something that would have been sent to uh, your email address when you were accepted to the university. Um, it's usually your last name and the first initial of your first name. Now, if it's a more commonplace last name, like in this case, we use Smith as an example, I can almost guarantee you there would be some uh, numbers there following uh, Smith B uh, to differentiate from any other student here that might have Smith as a last name. Um, but that's just an example. Uh, and then your password, at least temporarily, is your student ID number, which always begins with the numbers 855 here at William Patterson. That's a number that's uh, unique to each individual student. You use that information, you click log in, and then click the little email icon that appears in the top right in order to access your student email address. So again, this is just a visual that you can see up top. There's that WP Connect button I was talking about before. Um, as I mentioned, it is the online student portal. Almost all of the information that you would need to access regularly as a student is housed on WP Connect. It's meant to be sort of a one-stop shop for you, whether you need to look up something for billing purposes, whether you need to look up what courses you're registered for, um, contact information for different departments across the university, et cetera. That's the, the first place that you should look for any of that information. Um, when you log in, in for the first time, um, you will be prompted to acknowledge university alcohol and drug policy. Um, you would confirm your PIN number, and in most instances, uh, the PIN number is your six digit date of birth. You can see month, month, day, day, year, year. But if you try uh, your six digit date of birth and you encounter any issues, I would recommend trying the six digits that occur after the 855 in your student ID number. Every once in a while, for whatever reason, uh, sometimes that ends up being uh, the uh, password, uh, the PIN number that's created automatically. But I would say 99% of the time, it's your date of birth. So try that first. And then if you encounter any issues, uh, try that student ID number minus the 855. And then lastly, we have uh, a helpful help desk here that they'd be able to field any issues that you might encounter and make sure that you're able to log in with plenty of time to get uh, ready registered for your courses. And then you would complete a security question, provide an answer, and that's something that would be used in the future when you log into WP Connect. 
how to register for courses. You can see here there's a number of different uh, screenshots that we've taken from WP Connect so you can get a visual on what it would look like if you went through the process to select individual courses. Uh, but just for sort of the step-by-step -step for your reference, you would log into WP Connect as I referenced before. You would click on the student tab. There's a student tab, there's a faculty tab, etc. You would click on the student tab. Uh, under registration, which you can see is the box in the top left-hand corner, you would select look up course offerings uh, from the, the collection of links that are there. You would then uh, select the term uh, that's of interest for you. In this case, you would select spring 2018. Um, but obviously, you know, if you're registering for courses in a future term, we also have a summer term, uh, we have a fall term, and we have a winter session. Um, you could select the appropriate one there. You could do a specific date range if you need to, but I think most of our students would be using that uh, individual semester term search. And then you would click submit there at the bottom. Uh, on the right hand side, you'll see uh, that you can sort by a number of different parameters depending on what you're looking for. Most frequently, uh, subject is selected, um, you know, whether you're uh, an MBA student pursuing accounting uh, or someone who is pursuing biotechnology, et cetera. Um, you could see the schedule type uh, there. You can see the instructional method if it's on campus, if it's a hybrid uh, program or course or online uh, course. You could see the course level. I have that circled as graduate, and the reason I do is while some of you may be taking some undergraduate courses as a non-degree student to fulfill some program requirements that perhaps you didn't fulfill when you were an undergrad student. Um, the majority of you will probably be taking grad courses. And if you leave undergrad, if you select all there under course level, the list of courses that is returned is going to be much larger for you as we do have a number of undergraduate courses here. So uh, in the interest of time, make sure you select graduate under course level. And then uh, you can sort for a number of other things. But in this case, we did subject and we did course level. And then you would click section search there right on the bottom, that uh, gray box that's there. So there's a number of different uh, codes and, and other things that you'll see, and the, the screen can look a bit cluttered at first when you access it for the first time and you're not necessarily familiar with what you're looking for. So a couple of the things uh, of uh, sort of central focus, CRN is course registration number. That is the number which is used for registration purposes. It's always a five digit number and we gave an example there. And then there are also section numbers. Sometimes there are more than one sections of an individual course and that would distinguish between those sections. This is what the screen would look like after you did a search and you click submit uh, earlier. In this case, we did uh, accounting as what we were looking for. Um, you could see a number of different things. The CRN numbers, as we, I referenced before, are highlighted in blue there. And you can see everything from the day of the week that the course is taking place, the time, et cetera. And we'll walk through what some of these things mean. But this is just, again, so you can get a visual. And then here are some of the categories, again, that we'll go over real quick. Um, days, most of them self-explanatory, but M is Monday, T is Tuesday, W is Wednesday, R uh, is Thursday, that's perhaps the only unique one, and then F is Friday and S is Saturday. Uh, we do not offer uh, Sunday courses at this time. If you see under the time that the courses are taking place, TBA, it usually means it's an online course and you get more specific information uh, a little bit further down the line. Um, CAP is the maximum course capacity. ACT is the actual current number of students that are registered for that course. REM is the remaining seats that are available. Uh, WL cap is waitlist capacity. Uh, WL act is how many waitlist spots are available. And then WL remaining is how many spots are remaining at this time. The instructor is obviously the professor that's teaching the course. Uh, the date is usually a range. It's the first and the last date that the course is going to be running during that term. And then the location is where uh, the course is being held if it's on our Valley Road campus, uh, if it's on our main campus, if it's an online course and the building, etc. So in terms of actually selecting and registering for a course, in this case, uh, we've got a number of uh, MBA courses that are listed. And what you'll see is on the left-hand side, we have checked uh, off one of the boxes there to select organizational behavior and communication as a course that we want to register for. In the bottom left-hand corner, you would click that register box and you would then be prompted to enter your alternate pin. Again, that's usually your six-digit date of birth. And then you would review and acknowledge the financial responsibility page, which is simply saying that you are going to be paying for that course that you have registered for unless you need to uh, submit a 
leave of absence, uh, withdraw from the university, et cetera. Um, so you would click register and that would register you for that individual course, assuming that there are the spaces available for you to take that course and there are no requirements or otherwise preventing you from doing so. So this is a list, if you were to go and look at the courses that you'd registered for, you can see uh, web registered on the left-hand side by status. That means that you registered online and are currently registered for that course and the date that you did so. Um, if at any point you need to drop courses, um, and I'll, I'll talk you through sort of uh, some of the dynamics of that process, um, but you have a couple options. First, I think it's important to note that you cannot drop down yourself to zero credits after you have registered for one or more credits uh, here at William Patterson University. The reason for that is you have two actions that have to happen if you're trying to drop down to zero credits. Um, you either need to submit a leave of absence form. Uh, that's usually you want to continue your studies but are not able to pursue studies at that time for that individual term, uh, or you need to withdraw from the university. And there are limitations on your ability of when you can return to take classes again under those circumstances. Um, both of those forms are available in WP Connect uh, through the registrar's office. Um, and sometimes, obviously, you register for the wrong course, you make a mistake. Under those circumstances, the registrar's office will be able to help you. They can drop you for your courses on their end, and then you can register for the correct courses afterwards. Um, but it's to ensure uh, that we're able to determine what your status is as a student uh, and that you're able to uh, get into the correct courses and that everything is done as it should be. Um, so know that you can drop down to zero credits if you make a mistake. Um, and then obviously if you need to leave the university uh, for a, a limited amount of time or if you wanna withdraw from the university entirely, you do have to uh, register for one of those uh, two forms that I, had, I mentioned on the bottom. Um, now beyond that, if you re register for three courses for nine credits and you need to drop two of them, you can do that yourself. And you would just uh, select the course uh, and you would select web drop there from that drop down menu that you see under action and then click submit changes and that would drop you from that course you can drop down to three credits two credits one credit depending on on the the number of credits that you have you just cr can't drop down to zero credits yourself um, without submitting a leave of absence form or a withdrawal form and again uh, hopefully that clears that up now so you don't encounter any questions or issues with that uh, if you do find that you need to drop some of your courses so really the short message is um, have a dialogue with program directors talk and make sure that you're comfortable with the courses that you're registering for that you're sure that they are the right courses for you um, and then you won't have to deal with any of this uh, certainly but we know things happen there are um, health issues that can pop up family issues that can pop up etc job issues that can pop up there are certainly reasons that people need to drop their courses uh, and certainly we're here to support you in, in any way that we can with any of those issues that may pop up Non-degree status. Uh, some of you may be uh, pursuing coursework as a non-degree student. And for those of you that are, you could take up to nine graduate credits, uh, which is oftentimes three courses, or 30 undergraduate credits without formally matriculating into a program here. Um, if you decide you want to proceed beyond those limits, if you reach the nine credits and, and you say to yourself, I'm hoping to take one more course, um, maybe you can't take a GRA, GRE test in time or something else that might prevent you from uh, completing an application for a matriculated program, uh, you would need to get permission from uh, the program director and they would then submit that to us and at their discretion they have the ability to extend that for you beyond the nine credits on the grad level or 30 undergraduate credits um, but notwithstanding uh, usually at that point uh, students will matriculate into a program and that would require you going through the regular application process submitting all of the required documentation and then being accepted into a program uh, and then continue on with whichever program is of interest to you please note the completion of courses as a non-degree student does not guarantee you acceptance into one of our graduate programs and not all of our courses or programs here are available for non-degree students Waitlist. As I referenced before, uh, we do have uh, waitlist spots for each of our courses here, and it is important to note that there are five spots available. Now, to go back to the email reference that I made before, this is one of the reasons why it's important to be checking your student.wpnj.edu uh, email address. 
if you have selected to be put onto the wait list and one of those spots becomes available to you, um, you'll get an email to that student email account letting you know, okay, there's a spot available. You, after you receive that email, you have to log in and register for the course yourself as we've walked through. And you'll have 48 hours to register that for that course before that seat becomes available to the next in line. So obviously, if you've put yourself on the wait list, it's your hope that you get into that course. And if you had that opportunity and missed out because you didn't check your student email, um, that would be an unfortunate circumstance for you. So again, especially if you're going to have yourself on a wait list for a course, make sure you're checking that regularly so you don't miss out on uh, that important email. Why can't I register? Uh, as you go through and try and register for a course, um, you may either not be able to check off one of the courses that you want to register for, um, or you may receive an error message when you go and try and register for a course. And there's usually a good reason why that error message pops up, but it's good to know some of the most common ones and how you might go about uh, taking care of that issue um, so you're not uh, putting it off and not kind of cutting it close to the start of classes. Uh, the first is approval by academic chair. Um, if you get that, uh, that specific reference, you might be missing a requirement, um, an earlier requirement in order to move on. In this case, the title is Diagnostic Practicum 2. You may have needed to take Diagnostic Practicum 1, for example. Um, in that case, you should reach out to the appropriate program director and request permission to register for that particular course. Uh, if they uh, review your circumstances and say, yes, you know, this student should be able to register this course, uh, they will reach out to our office, let us know that that's a case, and that hold will be lifted and you would then be able to proceed with registering for the course. Um, another one is status prerequisite, uh, same type of idea. That's something where a prerequisite hasn't been fulfilled and you should reach out to the program director to discuss if you can get that requirement waived or if you need to take a course in order to fulfill that requirement before you can proceed with taking that course. Registration add errors, student restriction. Um, that's where on the left-hand side here under select, it says SR instead of there being a checkbox available for you to select to register for the course. Um, in that case, you should click on your student tab uh, in WP Connect and then click view holds. Um, that will show you more information about what holds exist on your account. And there are a number of different types of holds that might exist. Um, if you are a non-degree student and you have reached that cap for the number of courses that you can take as a non-degree student, there might be a graduate admissions hold there that's preventing you from registering for any courses, not just this one. Um, there may be a bursar hold, uh, which might be a financial uh, outstanding item. It could be related to tuition payments, etc. Uh, there may be an immunization hold if you haven't submitted an immunization document that's required for you in order to attend as a, as a student. Uh, there are a number of different uh, th reasons, a, a library hold, uh, et cetera. Um, so as you can see there, we just did a grad admissions hold as an example, and you'll see uh, why when you go into student holds. Um, now, there are always different departments that might be appropriate to reach out to, but in most instances, it is in your best interest to reach out to the Office of Student Enrollment Services. They're located here in Morrison Hall. Uh, they have a counter right at the front entrance when you walk in the building, um, and they can uh, speak with you in person, over the phone, by email, whatever is most convenient for you, and they can take a look at your account take a look at the hold and let you know what steps you need to take in order to get that hold lifted so you can register for your courses. And again, it's good to try now to register. If you encounter these issues, there's more than enough time before the holidays uh, to get these issues taken care of so that you can register for courses and be able to just uh, hopefully relax with family, enjoy the holidays and not have to think about uh, any outstanding issues in January with a couple weeks at the start of the semester. Payment options. I'm not going to talk too heavily about this except to let you know that there is a tip, a tuition installment plan um, that breaks up the uh, payments uh, into smaller payments throughout the course of a semester. There are a number of different ways that we accept payments here, including e-checks for online payments, uh, credit cards, uh, checks, money order, etc. Uh, those payments can be made uh, at the Office of Student Enrollment Services as well. Again, located in Morrison Hall if you want to come on campus. Uh, they can be mailed uh, to the address listed there, and again, uh, payments can be made online as well. Uh, you should get regular notifications to your student email account about billing. 
Um, obviously, make sure that uh, payments are submitted on time uh, for the semester. Uh, there are uh, drops for courses. If you don't submit your payment, uh, there is a chance you could be dropped for your courses and have to go through a, a basically a reinstatement a process. And certainly, we would uh, much rather uh, you take care of that on the front end so you don't have to go through that exercise and you don't have to worry about uh, getting deregistered from your courses. Important contacts. Um, all of these offices are located again in Morrison Hall, um, and that includes the grad admissions office. Our number is there as well as our email address, which is graduate at wpunj.edu. The Office of Student Enrollment Services, which again is sort of a one-stop shop for everything from financial aid inquiries, um, holds, etc. cetera. Um, so certainly feel free to be in touch with them as well. And then the Office of the Registrar. Again, I understand sometimes people go to register for a course, talk to their program director and say, oops, I registered for the wrong one. I want to drop down to zero credits, but I can't do it myself. The Office of the Registrar can walk you through that process and, and just really field any uh, registration issues that you might encounter. Uh, but certainly that will hopefully be helpful for you. There's three offices in, in particular. And if you have trouble in getting in touch with a program director or if you want to speak to someone in another office here on campus, we are happy to serve as a middleman and point you in the right direction and make sure we're able to get you in touch with whomever you need to speak with. Um, so that concludes the, the formal part of our presentation. Certainly, I hope this was helpful. I try to keep it brief, but still touch upon all of the things you might need to know as you go through and try and register for yourself. Again, can't stress enough. Uh, it's good to get these things out of the way and not necessarily push them off for another day or another week. Uh, it's certainly my hope that if you haven't registered for courses already, you might be able to give it a try tonight uh, or, or certainly by this weekend at the latest and get your courses locked up so you don't have to think about it again. Um, we will have an orientation webinar as well that's going to be coming up in uh, early January. So keep an eye on your email inbox for that as well. Uh, and we'll go through some of the things like getting your student ID card, parking decal, et cetera, some of the other questions you might have. Um, but from all of us here at the William Patterson University Graduate Admissions Office, thank you for attending our webinar today. We certainly hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and we're looking forward to welcoming you on campus in January. Take care.